Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. So we are doing interview questions of Code Java. So today's question that we are going to do is, why do we need marker interface? So we are going to talk about marker interface. We are going to see the examples and then some follow-up interview questions related to marker interface. First of all, what is a marker interface? So any interface, as we know, it has certain methods which has to be implemented by the concrete classes. In case of marker interface, it is an empty interface. That is why it is also known as tag interface. So when we say an empty interface, it's literally empty. We are going to see uh, the examples of that also, the classes, how they look. Literally empty, there are no methods, no fields, no constants, nothing. So the next question comes that if it is an empty interface, why do we even need it? We need it because it will provide some metadata. It conveys certain information to the JVM. About what? About the object of the runtime type, which means any class which is implementing the marker interface that will have its object created. So what kind of object that class can create is going to be determined by the marker interface that class is implementing. For example, three examples we have taken a marker interface, clonable interface, serializable and remote. If I talk of clonable interface, any class which implements the clonable interface, the objects of that class will be able to clone the objects. If I implement serializable interface, the objects of that class will be able to serialize and deserialize the objects. So it is just giving like a metadata or some information to the JVM that this is how the objects of the class are going to be. It just indicates that much message. So the follow up question will be, okay, if I use a class and I try to uh, specify the marker interface, like, okay, my class ABC implements serializable or it implements clonable, that is fine. And you are saying that if I implement that interface, it gives a message that the objects of the class has to be in that particular way. If my class ABC doesn't implement the serializable, if I don't write implement serializable in that case, will my class still be able to serialize the objects? Let's go to the IDE to find out the answer for that. So into the ID, so this is the class, the student class, which has three fields, ID, name, and marks. So is the constructor. And then I've written a main method in which we are trying to serialize the object. So in simple words, what it means, I'm creating an object. Like I said, the class will have its object created. So I created a new object. And then I'm trying to write that object into a file in the form of, in the stream of bytes. Because whenever we try to, store or transmit anything, we try to convert that object into bytes, that is called serialization. The vice versa, like if I want to read from the bytes and reconstruct the object, I use deserialization. So what is the code? What the code is doing first is trying to create an object, then it is trying to write to this file. And then it is using the right object to write it. And it is printing out that the student object has been saved in the file successfully. When we are trying to deserialize, we are just doing the opposite. We are reading the input from the file into which whatever uh, we have written, this uh, object information, we are reading from that same file and reconstructing the student object S2. And we are seeing if we have got the same ID and we are seeing if we have got the same value. So we are printing out the ID, the name and the marks. Now, notice that I'm trying to do serialization and deserialization and I've not implemented the serializable interface as of yet. So that was the question. If I don't implement, will I still be able to serialize it or not? So let's run this. We are getting an exception, not serializable exception, which means that unless I implement the serializable, the marker interface, I will not be able to serialize the objects of student class. So let me add this implements serializable. Let us also take a look at this marker interface. What do we have? We have nothing. It's completely empty. We just have a Java doc stating everything about this uh, marker interface. So it's a pretty lengthy Java doc as we can see. It, if you read this, you will get a complete idea of what is happening behind the scenes. So this is how the serializable interface looks like. So back to our student class. Now I have implemented serializable. Now let's run this. We see that the student state has been saved in the file. And then it is retrieved and we are able to print the ID, the name and the marks also. Let's take a look at the file also, which gets created. That is serializedemo.txt. This is the file. Nothing much because it's anyway written in bytes and that is not in human readable format. But basically what we have understood is I'm trying to store a student object with the following ID, name and marks. Now I'm also trying to, uh, I'm trying to store it in this file in some format. And then I'm also trying to read from the same file and reconstruct my object. All of that can be done 
because I have implemented this marker interface called serializing. So that is all about and the other examples of marker interfaces are clonable remote interface. So that is how we have got to know what is a marker interface, why do we need a marker interface and what happens if we don't use a marker interface. So thank you so much for watching this video. See you guys in the next one.